This is the third mini lecture for section 6.3. So we just talked about how, um, you know, you, we can usually use common sense reasoning or often use common sense reasoning to perform division problems. But, um, you know, for fractions that involve large numerators or, or denominators or maybe times when we want to do it a little more quickly, um, it's helpful to have a rule. So we have this thing that, you know, we all learned in grade school the inverted multiply rule, which is that a over b divided by c over d is the same as a over b times d over c. Okay, so let's write a little proof of this. It's, it's easy to prove, but in order to prove it, you have to think about what it is you're trying to prove. <coughs> when I ask what is a over b divided by c over d, I'm asking what do you have to multiply by c over d in order to get a over b? So by, by saying the, that the answer is that thing, I'm saying this fills in the blank. You know, I'm trying to figure out, you know, c over d times what is equal to a over b. That's what it means to ask what is this quotient. And by saying the quotient is equal to this product, I'm saying that product fills in the blank. So to prove this, we just need to show that it fills in the blank. So I just write c over d times a over b times d over c. After I multiply this all out, I have c times a times d over d times b times c. And fundamental law of fractions means that I can get rid of the d's and the c's. That leaves me with a over b. Which proves that, you know, that is the quotient. Okay, so a over b times d over c is the quotient. Because it, it fills in the blank. So I, I, I write all that out um, because you know sometimes students get mixed up about um, which thing to invert, probably because they've just kind of memorized the rule. So I think it's helpful to kind of have this in the back of your mind. That way, if you happen to forget, you can sort of reproduce the reasoning and, and know, oh yeah, I don't want to invert the first number, I want to invert the second one. That's what's going to help me. Okay, so let's check this for our example. The, the example where we did um, two and a half divided by three fourths. So two and a half divided by three fourths. Let's see, that's five halves divided by three fourths, which according to the rule is five halves times four thirds. which is 20 over 6, which is 10 over 3, which is 3 and 1 third, which is what we got. So, you know, we got the correct answer through graphical reasoning. Um, but if we had known ahead of time you know, how to use this rule, we could have just worked it out this way. But I, I think the graphical reasoning is really important. And you'll see lots of that on this homework. Um, because, you know, what happens is that, um, you know, you, you drill students on how to do problems like this, you know, over and over and over again. So, so they, you know, they learn this process. You all know this process. I know that you do. But then if you hand them a problem involving, um, like, how much, how much, um, wood they need to buy to build something or, or how much oil they need to add to a recipe or how much dirt they need to f buy for their garden or um, things like that. Those are all examples from my own life where I've had to do some fraction arithmetic. When, when they're posed with a problem like that, they don't know what to do because they've learned these processes and they've learned them really well, but they have no intuition for what it means or how to apply it. And so when they're given some kind of problem, 
they don't know what to whether to multiply or divide and um, often they'll divide the wrong thing by the wrong thing um, and and so you know you know this is great what we just did here is great but it, it's absolutely pointless if you can't use it for anything you know it's you're, you're just memorizing pointless things so if you can't use math in your daily life what is the point and sadly you know a lot of the students coming out of math classes aren't able to do that they're not able to use it in their life so I think that developing an intuitive understanding being able to work through these things using pictures for instance before you get to this stuff really helps with that um, so the, the book has a number of word problems for this section um, and some of them you can solve using pictures and, and I really recommend that you try to draw pictures first try to think about the reasoning before you jump into the problem um, okay so if, if c over d is a fraction then the fraction d over c is called its reciprocal so if you turn it upside down that's the reciprocal multiplying by the reciprocal undoes the fraction action so for example suppose you start with a unit you perform the two-thirds action and then you perform the three halves action you end up with the original unit so 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 you know take take your unit let's say it's a little loaf of bread or something okay and you perform the two-thirds action which means you cut this thing into three equal parts yeah, maybe just mentally maybe physically and you just take two of those parts so this is the two-thirds action and so you end up with you know that um, two-thirds of a loaf and kind of trying to draw it where we can see what we lost right so after that we do the two-thirds action we end up with this so you know so this 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 thing right here that's the new unit But now, now we're going to do the three halves action to this unit. What does the three halves action do? Well, it, it, it says take your unit, or however many of those units that you need. You divide those units into two equal parts, and then you want three of those parts. So if I take this new unit, this you know, part of a loaf of bread, which is our new unit, I divide it into two equal parts, you know, mentally perhaps, and then I imagine what, what, how much bread would I have if I had three parts like this? Well, that's that's what we get when we perform the three halves action, and I end up with the original loaf. So if I perform the two-thirds action and then I perform the three-halves action, I end up with what I started with. So these, 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 these actions kind of undo each other. So dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, right? When you divide by something, you're undoing a multiplication. So when we divide by a fraction, we're undoing the fraction action. Okay, but undoing the fraction action is the same as as doing the reciprocal fraction action and doing the reciprocal fraction action is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal so so this is a way of un understanding i think why multiplying by the reciprocal accomplishes the same thing as dividing by the fraction So the, the homework is here. Um, this last set is 
home is uh, word problems. Very important. We'll spend lots of time talking about that in class.